Why, hello there everyone. I'm Laxo, aka the Kumo Sensei, Minasan, Kamawa, and uh, good evening everybody. And this video is a bit late, but allow me to explain. So while I was recording this video outside, it started to rain. So yeah, I thought the weather was gonna, you know, get better over time, but it just kept on raining. So I had to finish the rest indoors. So that's why you're gonna see me clean enclosures indoors. And I didn't use my sink. As a matter of fact, I don't really wash my enclosures in the sink because of urticating hairs and sometimes substrate particles. And I don't want that getting around the sink because it's a hassle to clean afterwards. So when it comes to the second process of cleaning my enclosures out, I'm going to be doing it in a large container full of hot water. But let's get straight into this. So my cleaning process is pretty simple. My first one is essentially just doing a thorough wash outside with the hose making sure I get most of the substrate off the enclosures and the webbing, etc. Then when it comes to the second process, I usually do that indoors. And what I do is I take some hot water and essentially I just rinse off anything that is left remaining. And that's essentially all I'm doing. So it's nothing too crazy, but man, the weather was not cooperating. So basically what happened was that while I was cleaning out the enclosures outside with the hose rinsing out the enclosures, getting the substrate and the webbings off and whatnot, it actually started to rain. And oh boy, I had to get my camera and my gear right back inside the house because I don't want my camera gear getting wet because if it does, then uh, I'll tell you, warranty is kind of expensive. So I'm trying to actually, you know, not to get it wet. So I hope you guys understand that. Like I promised, we're washing dishes. I mean, <laughs> enclosures. I keep saying dishes. Man, I I need to, <laughs> I really need to stop doing that. But uh, I'm surprised people actually wanted to see this. I guess it's just because they really just want to see me post something this week. So this is pretty much going to be the only video this week because there's really nothing going on for this week that I have to do for my uh, collection and whatnot. So next week, we should be back on schedule to the typical two videos per week. So as promised, I'm going to be answering some questions. And these questions are pretty much questions I've been getting through my emails that I've pretty much haven't answered or very niche questions. And I'll also insert some self questions in here as well. So uh, let's get straight into it. So the first question is essentially asking, is breeding and selling tarantulas profitable? And my honest answer is no. So if you're trying to actually breed and sell tarantulas as a full-time job or try to make it a main source of income, you know, for sustainability and whatnot, it is not profitable on that aspect. However, I do think that if you do tarantulas as a passive income, or as a side hobby for, you know, just making some side cash or something, then I do think that it is profitable, even to the most experienced tarantula breeders and also to the tarantula breeders with like really big names in the hobby. Even they have regular jobs, just like you, me, and everyone else. Now, if you're going to sell tarantulas, you need to diversify what you're selling. And what I mean by that is essentially you got to get into other animals, such as leopard geckos, ball pythons, etc. to make your income stable. If you're just selling tarantulas alone, that in itself is not a very sustainable income by itself. Now, on to the next question, and that is, what is the hardest part about tarantula breeding? And in my honest opinion, I think it's actually selling. Like, literally selling tarantulas. I think that is the hardest part. But if we're solely just talking about tarantula breeding, I'd say maybe conditioning, but that's really about it. Next question, where do I start? In my honest opinion, if you're talking about getting into tarantula breeding, it's not actually buying tarantulas. It's actually reaching out to other tarantula breeders and trying to establish yourself as somebody in the market or in the hobby because the power of knowing other tarantula breeders and other tarantula hobbyists is such a huge advantage, especially after producing your first tarantula egg sac because you're going to be stuck with a large number. It's not going to sell overnight. So having, you know, connections to other tarantula breeders, vendors, and other hobbyists really will help you. And trust me, they can help you get into things you never thought you would, especially when it comes to species that are either rare or difficult to get a hold of. Next question, which tarantula species will sell? And the honest answer is that it could be none of them or it could be all of them. It really just comes down to the market, the time and place, and if you're lucky enough. The tarantula market is the tarantula market. And the market in itself, when it comes to business, is unpredictable. No one can know what species will sell today or tomorrow. So what we do is we take our sales on what species we have and focus on what has sold very well, 
what has sold poorly, etc. And we use that to determine where to go and what to do from there. Alrighty, next question. How much money have you made selling curly hair tarantulas? Huh. I'm guessing that's a response to my curly hair tarantula thoughts video that I made on the channel. And the most I've ever made selling curly hair tarantulas was about $1,000. So it's not a lot, especially if you're considering how much it costs to feed, house, space, etc, etc. So in terms of gross profit, maybe about $600, maybe $800 in profit. But it's not a lot if you think about it. And especially if you consider the time it took up which it was about six to seven months, it's not really profitable if you put it into that perspective. That means that in one year, if it took six months for one X act, that means that in total, if we combine the six months into 12 months, AKA one year, the total will be about $1,200. And that is nothing if you're considering that I'm an adult and if I have bills to pay, etc., etc. So I don't think the time and effort is worth it, but hey, to each their own. Now I'll say this though, as a broke college student, I thought the money was a lot, but uh, that was when I was in college. So, uh, so yeah, I wonder how well will they do now? I don't think they'll do as well because they're overly saturated and I can actually buy them through wholesale for about 50 cents a piece. So I don't really think it's going to be worth it for a lot of people if you're trying to sell curly hairs because they're going to be sitting for a long time. So some of these are kind of personal questions, but I guess I'll answer these as well. So let's get straight into these. Okay, so the first one is, how am I doing? I'm doing pretty good. So there's a second question to this first question, and that is, why do I sound so tired? And honestly, I'm tired all the time, but uh, that's the thing about growing up. As an adult, you're always tired. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, I'm being honest, right? Next question. How did I get into this hobby? Interestingly, one of my friends actually had a rose hair tarantula. And that was pretty much how it started, by pure accident. And then I wanted to learn about tarantulas, but I had no idea what I was getting into. So eventually I actually found somebody who was willing to teach me the things I needed to know. Not just about tarantula keeping, but also tarantula breeding. But that part came more as a bonus because I just wanted to learn about the hobby. But I ended up becoming a tarantula breeder by learning how to breed. The, some of the things I was taught by uh, the person who taught me was outdated information. So yeah, if you go back to the forums, like way back when I joined, some of the <laughs> some of the advice I gave out was not so great because it was outdated. So basically, I ended up having to relearn some things that were more modern in terms of practices. But essentially, when it comes to tarantula breeding, that was more of a byproduct of just wanting to learn how to keep tarantulas. It wasn't something I set out to do. So I guess you could say it was a happy accident, which is why I'm here now. Righty, alrighty. Next question. How much do I sweat or exercise or workouts from doing tarantulas? Oh boy. I'll tell you, I'm sweating essentially every single time I'm doing tarantula work. And it's not because I'm out of shape, it's just because there's so many things I have to do to the point where I end up sweating pretty much always because I keep my tarantulas very warm and when you're doing tarantula work in a warm area where you're keeping them, you're going to be sweating a lot, especially if you're trying to move enclosures around, lift enclosures, and move a bunch, I mean hundreds of enclosures at times, which is why I downsized my collection to where it's small now. Oh man, yeah, it, it, it can be a lot at times, but I promise you guys, I'm in shape, I'm super healthy, and I'm looking great. I promise you that. I'm not out of shape. I don't know why people, I'm not, like, I don't know why people think I'm out of shape. I train, diet, and work out like most other people, so I'm I'm, I know what I'm talking about. Well, 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 I'm like, look, I sound tired, but it doesn't mean I'm out of shape. Next question. Are you actually Asian? Like Exotics Lair and Ants Canada. Yes, I am Asian. So uh, I hope that answers your question. That's kind of a strange one. Next question. Face reveal when? Or are you going to be like Ants Canada and Exotics Lair? I'm guessing this is the same person that asked the previous question. So uh, I don't know. Maybe. Who knows, right? How about a slight three second face reveal, sort of? One, two, three, blink. Okay, we're done. Okay, next. What is my favorite color? So my favorite color is actually red. So, uh, yeah, that's an easy one. Next. What is the best TV show I've ever seen? That is an easy one. Breaking Bad and probably Better Call Saul as well. But, uh, hey, to each their own. Alrighty, next question. Will I ever get an apprentice? Oh boy, this is for the future. 
like I stated, if the time comes, then yes. But as of now, I'm not looking for an apprentice, but I am considering it. So if I find somebody, I'm just going to put them on my list. And then when the time comes, I'm just going to call them up and say, hey, you want to be an apprentice or you want to be under an apprenticeship? And I don't know, maybe that's how it's going to work. But let's wait and see. Let, let's not rush that. Alrighty, one more question. My self question to myself to end this off. What is my favorite food? And I like ice cream, sesame chicken, egg rolls, dorayaki, yakisoba bread, yakisoba pan, if you want to be more specific. Those are pretty good. And uh, yeah, that's just a couple of my few favorites. And I think I'll do more of these in the future. But as of now, that's pretty much most of the questions that are pretty much sent to me through my emails or through the comments. So I hope that answers some of your questions or curiosities about me, I guess. But uh, yeah, without further ado, this week is pretty much only going to have this video unless something happens on Friday. So let us wait and see, right? But as the typical everybody, if you want to support the channel, as always, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to stick around. I upload every single Tuesday and Friday here in this channel. And also support me on my IG and on Patreon. And with that, stay lax and laxo out from the Kumo Sensei.